What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is my review-ish of the changes made to our Gold Cup squad. Now, with the knockout stage just around the corner, obviously this is a very big talking point to see what type of changes the coach is looking to make. Most of the time, it's a big statement of intent, bringing in a lot more experienced players and probably removing some of your younger slash inexperienced players from the squad. Um, so even though a majority of the squad that we've had up until now has been trying to win themselves a spot for the World Cup next year. Now this is going to be a bit more of a, okay, we're now trying to win the tournament type of squad. So I'm going to look at these changes bit by bit, you know, go from position to position, and just sort of analyze and grade the changes, you know, talk about why it happened. I probably won't be able to understand all of it because, let's be honest, nobody can think like Bruce Arena does because... Nobody's as arrogant or idiotic as he is. But anyway, first of all, let's talk about the keepers. Made two keeper changes, and I already talked about a little bit of this in my last review. But you've got Tim Howard and Jesse Gonzalez coming in with Brad Guzon and Sean Johnson going out. So looking at the two keepers coming in, Tim Howard is our number one. And like I said, this is kind of a statement of intent saying we do want to win this tournament, so we're going to bring in our first option for keeper. Makes sense. You know, it does... It's nice to see that we do want to try to win this tournament. This isn't just a, oh, throwaway tournament. You know, tr obviously given some squad members that haven't gotten a chance a chance to play. But now we're bringing in our first team keeper. That shows that we are interested in winning this tournament. So that's good to see. And Jesse Gonzalez coming in is, he, he just changed nationality to American. And we want to see, I guess, where he is compared to our other keepers. So that one also makes sense. Guzan and Johnson leaving. Uh, Guzan, <laughs> Atlanta United, we need him. So I don't mind seeing him go. And on top of that, you know, he got to play pretty much most of the group stage. So we already got to see plenty of him. And he's still probably our second best keeper. Uh, with Johnson going back, though, I guess he either didn't cut it or just... I I'm not really sure why he came in if he wasn't going to play at all. But yeah, brought him in, never used him, and then sent him away. Um... Uh, Whereas Hamid at least got to play one game. So I'm not really sure what the thinking behind Johnson is. And I guess overall, I'm not really sure what the thinking is of changing two keepers. You know, if you want to bring in Tim Howard to be your number one, fine. Yeah, that's great. If you want to bring in Gonzalez to sort of find out where he is compared to other keepers. You know, is he third option, second option? Where is he compared to the other keepers? That's fine too. But doing both of them is, it feels like you're wasting one of the changes on your squad. You know, because there are other positions that need to be changed, that need to be improved upon. Bringing in two keepers is wasting one of those options, in my opinion. Even though both of them do make sense, I think if you do one of them, it still makes sense. You don't have to do both. So that would be my only complaint there. But as far as going in and coming out, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, problems there. And to our defense, there are no changes at all. And that's a problem in and of itself, because our defense is... One of our biggest issues. You know, Zussi was awful throughout the entire thing. Uh, Moro, not good enough. Gonzalez, lazy. Bessler, average. Hedges, terrible. Miazga, was, Miazga Lehigh, and Villafania were honestly the only ones that I thought, okay, there's something we can work with. Everybody else, though, in defense either needs to improve or just isn't good enough and need to be dropped. And so the fact that we didn't make any changes to our defense... It is a problem, and considering the changes we did make, looking at those, comparing those, yeah, it, it's an issue. So, a little frustrated there, but, you know, what can you do? <laughs> I'm not involved in the national team, so not my choice. Into the midfield, we've got Bedoya and, who's the other one in the midfield? Oh, Roldan going home, and then Bradley and Nagby coming in. Uh... I didn't understand the Bedoya change, but then somebody that I know told me that apparently he's going to have a baby soon, I think like in the next week or so, so that's why they're sending him home. That was something that they had planned upon because they knew about it beforehand. Um, and Roldan, I kind of understand because he did get that one game against Martinique and really didn't show much of anything. You know, didn't bring anything new, didn't really do poorly, but didn't show that, yeah, you deserve to be looking at the first team. You know, he wasn't anything special. So I kind of understand that. Um, and Bedoya, you know, obviously I understand that as well. 
Bradley coming in is kind of disappointing because I think we need to start moving on from Bradley because, like I've said several times before, he's not good enough. He's not our best player. He has severely dropped off. I mean, he's had maybe one good game, and that was against Mexico in the past several years. So I just I hate the fact that we're still relying on him a whole lot. I hate the fact that obviously Arena still thinks highly of him, just like Klinsman did. Um, I just I think he's really dropped off and he hasn't gotten any better. He's just gotten worse. It's time to move on. It's time to look at other players. And I'm just saying right now, if I see Bradley and McCarty starting one game, I'm calling a loss for that game because that is a terrible, terrible pairing in the midfield. I, Bradley and Acosta will probably work fine. Acosta and McCarty may work fine. But Bradley and McCarty would just be an awful pairing. <laughs> we will probably get crushed that game. Um, and then the other one coming in, Nagby, he's a player that's kind of been on the fringe, so I think this is probably just a chance for him to show what he's capable of. You know, is he able to be in that starting 11? Is he somebody that we can look to to provide for us? Um, and, you know, he's shown some quality in the past few games that I've seen him in. You know, he's shown his strength, he's shown his speed, but I do think he needs to work a lot on his technical, you know, the dribbling and the passing, because... When you're on the when you're on the wing like he is, you want them to be able to not just hold up the ball, not just run past players, but you want them to be able to provide that cross or provide that pass that cuts apart the defense. He doesn't really have that going for him. He can just run really fast and he's strong. So if he gets that into his game, I think he could be a better player. Um, but you know, like I said, this is just a chance for him to show if he's capable of being in the World Cup squad for next year. And then the final two, well, final four changes, um, Altidore and Dempsey come in and Rowe and Dwyer head uh, or leave the squad. This is probably the biggest problem I have in, throughout this entire thing. You know, the defense is the second biggest problem. This is the biggest problem. Because first of all, Rowe has been probably our best attacking player throughout the entire tournament. I mean, he has been the most creative. He has been the hardest working. I mean, first game he went off just because he was so exhausted from how hard he was working. I mean, he just, he looks like he was our one of our better players and probably our best attacking player. Maybe his artist was a little bit better, but that's about it. You know, he just, he looks so solid. He created several chances, got, got an assist in the first game, got a goal later uh, in the third game. So I just, I don't understand that choice at all. And then Dwyer wasn't great, but he was better than Agadello, without question. And that in itself should say, okay, that's the wrong choice. I mean, Morris I still don't like, and I talked about my frustration with him in the second game, uh, my review of the second game. So I, even though I don't really like him, I see where, okay, he scored two goals, so the chances are you're not going to send him home. Dwyer... He was pretty good in the first game. You know, got himself a goal. Pretty good against Ghana. Got himself a goal. Third game, not as good, but still, you know, working hard. You know, I see the the effort that he's putting in. Agadello did nothing. He came on early in the first game, did nothing. Played the most of the entire second game, did nothing. Came on late in the third game, did nothing. He provided nothing for us. On the ball, passing, shooting, nothing. He was worthless out there, and yet somehow he's still in the squad. Well, Dwyer's heading home. The guy who got a goal heads home before the guy who literally did nothing for us. And so I just I don't understand that choice at all. So Rowe heading home, frustrating. Dwyer heading home instead of Agadello, frustrating. And then you bring on Dempsey and Altidore. Dempsey, I can kind of understand, but at the same time, he's losing that that sharpness you know he's not as sharp as he used to be he's not as quick as he used to be he's getting up there in age we should start looking at somebody to replace him instead we're turning to him again to try to get us goals there's going to come a point where we can't turn to him anymore to get us goals because he won't be able to do it physically and yet we're still trying to oh let's rely on Dempsey let's rely on Dempsey same thing with Bradley you know Bradley in my opinion has dropped off a lot more than Dempsey has but Dempsey has dropped off. So we need to start turning our attentions elsewhere. Bringing him in is just a sign of, oh, we still don't have anybody else we can turn to. And Altidore, 
the only thing I can think of is this is his last chance to prove himself. Because he hasn't shown us really anything in the past several games that I've seen him in. So I really don't understand why we're bringing him in unless it's, all right, you have the knockout stages to show what you can do. If you can't get it done here, you're done. You know, you're not going to be in the World Cup squad next year. That's the only thing I can think of. But aside from that, I mean, that all four of those changes for me are just terrible, terrible changes. Roe and Dwyer heading home. You know, Dwyer isn't as bad as Roe heading home. But still, I prefer to see somebody else heading home aside from him. And then bringing Altidore and Dempsey in is just, I don't know. I don't know why we're turning to those two. You know, one is past his prime and slowly declining, while the other one still isn't the striker that we want him to be. And we've given him several chances, and he's still not there. And so, all of that said, the final two things I do want to talk about are two players that should be heading home <laughs> instead of other players. Um, and this, you know, this is more just my opinion from the group stages. And obviously with some of the changes happening, these can't happen, you know, because if you're changing one of the wings in Bedoya, you're probably going to bring in a wing in uh, Nagby. You're changing one of the midfielders in Roldan, you're going to bring in another midfielder in Bradley. Changing a striker and kind of an attacking player, you're going to bring on two strikers. So, you know, I, I get the fact that some of these wouldn't match up with what we're getting. And some of them, you know, there are players that need to head home over them, so I get that. But in my opinion, here are three players that I think should be heading home after the group stages, after a very, very poor group stage showing. First of all, Graham Zussi. And I don't think anybody can argue with that one. I think he was awful throughout the entire group stage. He played two games. Both of them were terrible. Aside from one assist that was a very well-hit free kick, aside from that, he was awful. Didn't do anything defensively. Attacking-wise, he made a few good runs that led to absolutely nothing. And just so many bad touches that it's like I'm watching him thinking, have you played in the past couple months? You know, have you just been sitting around doing nothing? Because it looks like he hasn't played at all. You know, his touches were awful. He's losing the ball so easily. So, in my opinion, he shouldn't be playing anymore throughout the rest of this knockout stage. I think Lehigh showed he had the capability to be a right back. I don't think we play Zeus anymore. If we do, Arena's an idiot, and unfortunately he is, so chances are we probably will see Zeus again. But he's definitely one that I think should be heading home after a terrible group stage showing. The other one is McCarty, and this is one that some people have been praising him throughout the group stage. In my opinion, he he's not good enough. He's too small. He's too slow-footed to be that defensive mid. He was getting juggled around in the Panama game. And in the uh, Nicaragua game, he was just getting bodied off the ball so easily because he's not strong enough. And they're just, oh, get, off, get out of here, little kid. I mean, he looks so small and so weak that... He just doesn't look good enough to be out there in the middle of the field where all of these big-bodied players are in there trying to win the ball over him. I just I don't understand what he brings. I, ha I didn't see anything that he brought to the field that really showed, oh, that's why he's out there. I never saw that. You know, I said in my last review, the only thing that he's really good at is making interceptions. But you need more in your game. If you're going to, you know, one of, my, one of the good examples for that is Fabregas for Chelsea. Defensively, he's not great, but he's very good at reading the game and making interceptions. Aside from that, though, he can pass the ball anywhere. You know, any type of pass he can try, he can pull it off. So he brings much more to the game than just the interceptions. Even though he's not very good defensively, he can intercept the ball and then he can play a great pass. That's why he's out there. McCarty, all he can do is intercept. We need more than that. You know, if you intercept the ball, that's great, but then likely his pass is either going to go to a defender or he's going to get bite off the ball and lose it. So he's one that I thought should also go home. And then the other one was Corona, and I talked about him in both of the games that he featured in. Just not good enough. Even the game where he got the goal, it was a very lucky goal, and it came from, honestly, he, he probably should have missed that because of how just slow it was. It was He was clean in on his left foot, but he's not left-footed, so he cut it back to his right, had an open shot, decided to cut again, and then there were five defenders in front of him, and if it didn't bounce off of one of them and happen to go in the corner, definitely not a goal. 
So he got very lucky on the goal. And aside from that, he just plays way too slow. So many times where there are so many openings for our attacking players, you know, our wings are getting down the line or our striker is making a great run in behind. It's like, play him, play him. But he doesn't see it because he doesn't have the vision. And so he takes three or four more touches and then plays it backwards or something. So he's just so slow on the ball, way too many touches, and just not good enough to be out there. So those are three players that I think deserve to be heading home after a very poor group stage showing. Um, but since all of this is already said and done, since the changes have been made, if you ask my opinion on what I expect to see going forward, um, the first uh, group stage game is against El Salvador. Not the most difficult game in the world. Not easy by any stretch of the imagina imagination. You know they did pretty well against Jamaica, handled themselves very fairly well against Mexico as well. Um, so not going to be an easy game. Probably a little bit less difficult than the Panama game, but only a little bit less. So I expect to see uh, probably Howard will play in that game. Uh, I really don't expect to see Gonzalez at all. You know, he'll probably be showing what he can do in the camp, not really playing. Uh, but if he is going to play, I do expect to see it in the El Salvador game. I don't expect him to play later on in the group stage. So it really could be between Howard and Gonzalez. Uh, but in defense, what I would prefer to see, uh, Villafania at left back, Hedges and Miazga, not Hedges, sorry, Bessler and Miazga in the middle, and then Lehigh on right back. I think... That's probably our best lineup right now, unless Gonzalez steps his game up. Uh, in the group stages, he was very lazy, very just not not passionate about it. <laughs> it was really, really shocking to see one of our more experienced defenders, somebody who's been in, in and around the first team for a while, just be so lazy in his defending, you know, strolling around, not really putting in strong challenges to try to block a shot, you know, turning his back. I don't know, it just... It looked like he didn't want to be out there. So if he can step it up, I wouldn't mind seeing him in, preferably with Miazga, because I think Miazga showed in that game against Nicaragua not the most difficult game to be in, but he showed a lot of drive and passion. I'm not just saying that because I'm a Chelsea fan. Um, he really did look probably our best defender over the three games, and that goal was just another way to cinch that for him. So I really do hope that he gets more of a chance and doesn't just, oh, you're the young one, so sit on the bench. Because, uh, you know, I think youth can really provide a lot of drive out there where some of our older players can be a little bit more lazy and, oh, my, my spot is assured, so I don't have to try as hard. So really would prefer to see Miazga with Bessel Bess right now. Uh, if Gonzalez steps up, though, Miazga and Gonzalez would probably be a good one, too. Into the midfield, prefer to see Bradley and Acosta right now. I do not want to see McCarty again this whole tournament. Chances are we probably will, but I prefer to see Acosta and Bradley right now. I think you got Bradley out there who's a bit more of the veteran. Uh, he can pop up every now and then with something. Uh, don't expect that much, though. I know I'm not, but I do think Acosta provides a lot of energy in the midfield. I think he can move a lot. His passing and his dribbling is pretty good as well. So I just think, you know, you bring in the quality of Acosta and then you've got the, I guess, the experience of Bradley and he can always, you know, pop up with something incredible every now and then. So that midfield pairing will probably work out pretty well. Uh, I would like to see Zardis and probably Nagby now that Rose not in anymore. Zardis and Nagby on the wings, I think, pretty good pairing. Um, if not one of those two, I think Pontius maybe deserves a bit more of a chance. Didn't really get to see a whole lot of him just because it felt like most of his con contribution in the Nicaragua game was we sent the ball long to him and he'd win it in the air, but nobody else was really moving to win the ball he knocked down. So I think if we get somebody up top who's willing to move around, you know, get around and try to win the ball after he wins it, I think his contribution on the field would grow a lot more. So if we were to put Pontius out there, I'd prefer it be Pontius and Nagby, and then possibly Zardes uh, up top with, I guess, Dempsey. You know, because Zardes can be your speedster. You know, he runs all over the field. He can win the ball whenever you know Pontius knocks it down. He can go and win it. And then Dempsey is your clinical finisher. So I think those two up top would probably work well. Um, but if you're going Zardis and Nagby on the wings, probably go with Dempsey and, I guess, Altidore. <laughs> I, honestly, 
I don't want to see Agadello anymore this tournament, and I don't really want to see Morris that much. You know, probably see him a little bit, but I just don't think he's got the quality to finish when we need him to. But then again, I don't think Altador has the quality to finish either, so we're really kind of struggling when it comes to attackers. Um, but I do think our best attackers right now are Zardis, Nagby, and probably Dempsey. So I want to see them involved some way, somehow. I really don't want to see Corona anymore this tournament because he's already shown he doesn't have the quality to do it. But those are all my opinions, so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What are your thoughts? What do you want to see going forward? What do you think of Bruce Arena's changes? How much do you disagree with him? Let me know. We can talk about it and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to future Gold Cup reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next game. Peace out.